Hello there. Today I'm going to talk about the teas from Monghai area. So we've recently uh, released our spring 2020 collection of four teas and we're very thankful because uh, we've sold a lot of tea actually. Uh, the first teas like the, the Naka tea has sold out just uh, yesterday. So yeah, thank you very much for, for the great sales. Uh, we're happy to see that uh, you're enjoying our products and feel free to post reviews on our website or on Instagram or whatever. Uh, it's always good to spread the word about good tea. It helps us a lot and I hope it will help other people find out about uh, nice poor teas. Well anyway, thank you very much for your support. So um, I would like to... I'm gonna talk a bit about uh, our spring 2020 teas that were released that are from Monghai area. So I just um, took a f uh, picked a few cakes. This is the Bulang Shan. This is the Mong Noi tea. This is Nano Shan. This is Naka. And this is the Lao Man, uh, Lao Man uh, Shanghai. Uh, I'm gonna talk about each of those uh, areas and brew some of them. Mm, so. What can we say about Monghai area? It's probably the most famous area overall for poor tea because uh, historically there's been a lot of uh, tea factories in Monghai. You can say it's the poor tea capital really. I think they have like over 500. Nowadays maybe it's close to a thousand different factories located in Monghai pressing tea, uh, making uh, ripe poor tea, shu poor, uh, making blends, uh, branding everything. So you can really say it's the the capital of tea, and you can't really say that there's a that there aren't many tea markets in Monghai. Actually, the whole city is filled with uh, tea shops. So wherever you go, you will have uh, tea shops selling tea, mostly wholesale. Um, yeah, from all areas because it's very common for uh, successful tea producers. Uh, from the mountains around to open a tea shop in Monghai. So if you if you ever come to Xishuang Banna to southern Yunnan, well, I recommend you visit Monghai. It's really the the temple of poor tea, of wholesale poor tea. Um, you will find out that the tea culture there is very um, rough in the way that it's not really prepared uh, for retail customer. It's really a tea everywhere piled in all sorts of manners and uh, as a tea enthusiast I'm sure you will love that. Okay, I would like to start with the Nanno tea. Okay, so I'm gonna brew, I have a couple of guy ones by my side, but first I think I would like to compare to compare the, the differences in uh, in look. So yeah, what I planned originally was to do only uh, a Nano and Naka side by side. And it got me thinking like, are they relevant comparing? And I would say yes, because they are uh, facing each other, okay? So let's say uh, here you have Jing Hong and here you have Mong Hai. Now Nano is in the middle of the two, um, slightly south. Okay, in the middle like this. It's just along the, the main road that connects Qinghong and Monghai. And Mongsong, so Naka is a village of Mongsong area. It's at the top, of, at the north of Mongsong, and it's high up there. So, uh, well, yeah, a bit closer to Monghai, to, to Monghai in the north. So, um, so they are facing each other. They are all together. The, the two mountains are just between Monghai and Jinghong. Mongsong is in the north. Nano is in the south. Now Nano is a much smaller mountain. It's really a small mountain. Uh, there are what maybe ten villages in Nano Shan, which are tightly packed. This cake f comes from Banpo Laozai. It's the the most famous village in. Uh, in Nanno Shan, mainly because from that village uh, you get a great view from Jinghong, really stunning view when the weather uh, fits, and you get most of the, well, a lot of tea gardens. Each village in Nanno Shan has tea garden, ancient tea gardens, 
but I think Banpol Aojai has the most of them. And they have um, the largest ancient tea garden is actually shared between Banpol Aojai and Yakojai. And you have a quite a, a long strip along along which you have it's all ancient tea gardens. And in that big tea garden uh, tea forest, you have the the ancient like the the king of the tea trees. But um, I think it's dead now or something. I've heard that. Something happened with the first king of the tea trees, so now they have a, a second king of the tea trees. <laughs> That's too bad. Uh, well, it, it was supposed to be 800 years old and it was a really big tea tree. I saw it for the first time in 2010 and I haven't been back there, but uh, yeah. Anyway, so that's Nanoshan and this is Naka. And just from the look of the leaves, well, you can clearly see that's different, huh? The, the Naka has very fury buds. And by the way, the Naka is, the, is second flush. It, it's been made a bit later than the Nanuo. So that Nanuo was made mainly in uh, early to mid-April and that one was probably two, three weeks later. So in late April. But I think it doesn't explain the difference in the look, okay? Um, it's... Um, it's a difference in cultivar. Well, the Naka leaves have the reputation to be fairly small. Mm, and yeah, I, w I wouldn't say they, they look much smaller, but at least in the pressed uh, cake state. But when you have the loose leaves, it's uh, much easier to see the difference. You can really see the, the leaves in, uh, in Naka area are pretty small. The smallest leaves you can find for poor tea I believe are from Ibang, so Ibang is in the, the, the six famous tea mountains, basically it's west of Iwu mountain. Uh, it's also, also very sought after tea, I got a sample this year. Um, it's very aromatic but you also get good chachi and everything. I didn't buy because it's fairly expensive tea and I think for that price level, you know, like the Laomana Gusu price level, the expectation, the requirement is really high, okay, the requirement for quality. So we didn't uh, make produce any Ibang tea this year, but we might in the future. But anyway, let's get back. So this is the Nano cake. You can see it's darker. The buds are, are less fury or at least, yeah, the, it seems the, the hair on the buds are not as prominent and not as long, even though you can see some so again, when you're looking, when you look at different teas, always try to take a step back, back and and have a general view, okay? Because you cannot really point out like one specific leaf. Oh, you see, like this is a long stem, and we know that uh, autumn tea has long stems, longer stems than spring tea. So you would go and say, oh, this is a blend of autumn and spring tea because you see this leaf, this leaf has a long stem. Uh, it really works on statistics, so try to keep uh, just a general look and general feel, okay? You can't make any conclusion based on a, on a single leaf. Mm, so yeah, what strikes us is really the golden color here. And uh, well, quite a lot of Huang Pian, so that would be due to the sorting. We didn't... Um, None of those teas were, were sorted by ourselves. The, the producers uh, took care of the sorting. Well, there are Huang Pian Tui here, but they are a bit less visible. Um, also, that would make sense since it's second flush, you would have more Huang Pian. So if they go for manual sorting, especially, uh, they will tend to leave more Huang Pian um, in the second flush and summer tea, just because it, it's too much of a pain to, to sort them properly by hand. If you use a machine, you don't have this problem because the machine will sort a lot of very tiny Huang Pian without problems. So I'm going to start by brewing those two. Oh yeah, but just... Yeah, yeah, I'm going to start by brewing those two, okay? Because I'm getting a bit thirsty. I won't use a, a scale. I, I will just... Uh, what? Eyeball the quantity. Anyway, the, these are teas that I have tried quite a lot of times already.
Naka is, uh, I would say, probably my favorite uh, tea mountain in terms of taste. I, I really like the taste of Naka, so maybe I'm, I'm starting a bit biased, but I guess what matters is really each, each terroir has its own personality um, and the, the goal of a good tea producer or tea buyer is to just find the best possible example uh, find a kind of archetype of, uh, yeah, you could say the terroirs are, are archetypes and you, you, your goal as a tea producer is to uh, reveal the terroir, make it, uh, make it express itself. Now, to me, like the idea of terroir in uh, Naka, I have a, a much more precise idea of what Naka tastes like than what Nano tastes like. Uh, I don't know, some people say that uh, Nano tea has a very obvious fragrance, but I don't think so. Not in the way, uh, not like Jingmai fragrance, because it still depends on how you process the tea. I think in the past Nano used to have a, a lot of fragrance because many people processed it that way. Mm, maybe very green. Well, very green, but in a way that reveals the fragrance. So that would be like mm, uh, cooking the tea very dry, you know, without too much uh, steaming. We like to, to process the tea quite green on the green side in Jingmai, but we make sure that we keep enough steam so that the tea doesn't dry out and doesn't overheat due to under dry heat, you see. Okay, so I can show you, you get a, a different feel, you know, when the, when the leaves are uh, in the Gaiwan. So this is the Nano and this is the uh, Naka. So Banpo Laozai is in the northeast of Nano Mountain. As I said, it's a very tiny mountain. All the, I think, all the tea gardens they have are exposed northeast. I'm not sure it would matter much because most of them are in uh, pretty dense forests. There's not, uh, there's a lot of shade. Well, at least in the in the gardens I have visited in Nano. While in Naka, um, it's mixed. I think in Naka, a lot of the gardens are, uh, they are old tea gardens, but there aren't many trees there. The altitude is about the same for the two villages. It's 1,600 meters. Which I, I, wa I was surprised when I checked that because, um, well, I thought that uh, Mongsong was at a much higher altitude, but it's not. It's just that it, it's in a, a high altitude area, but the village itself uh, is at 1,600 meters. And so I checked, like, the tea trees should be from maybe 1,500 to 1,800. And it's about the same for Nano. So, yeah, I was surprised to find that. I would have guessed that uh, Nano was at lower altitude. And, of course, I forgot my cups of tea, so I'm going to come back. Okay, here I am back with my two cups. I couldn't find uh, similar cups. Well, they are similar enough, I think... Uh, I think the shape is quite important. If you have very different shapes, you might have a different tasting experience, but at least here the shape is fairly the same and you can keep track of the the color, like you have different. Okay, so the first brew I didn't check. Again, I don't have the same pictures. Uh, yeah, it's very unprofessional because it's, it's quite a mess here. Uh, there's this... Mm, there's teaware everywhere, but uh, none of it fits. Uh, maybe it's part of the charm. But we're gonna move soon, and uh, we're gonna move to a new place, a uh, much larger building soon. And uh, I think we'll have more, um, well, more space to to do good setups. So okay, that's the first uh, first brew. There's not much you can say. You could check about the turbidity of the of the liquor like see if it's uh, if you can see through it or not and yeah you can see through it so it's it's no nothing special um, 
when it's very new or when it was just pressed it's normal to have a, to have a bit of turbidity actually to have a slightly cloudy um, soup especially in the rinse this is just due to the the steaming okay most of the time in uh, in uh, very fresh tea if you used a lot of steam during the processing or during the pressing you will have a cloudy soup very temporarily maybe for just a couple of weeks so now I just have a first introduction to the teas and I would say like the Naka here you know the Naka has much higher pitch uh, pitch fragrance compared to the Nano which shows a more uh, a more restrained fragrance yes I like both of course I would say in terms of fragrance Naka has always had a, a special place in my heart a bit like Jingmai you know these these kinds of fragrance all the the Mongsong area in Mongsong so in the north of Monghai north of Nano um, it's quite quite famous for its fragrance not all of the villages give that fragrance mm, but for sure Naka is famous for the good fragrance although it's not its main well it's one of its two characteristics but not the only one yeah so Nano is a very tiny mountain and on the opposite Mongsong is more of, a, of an area really there are even several mountain ranges you could say in Mongsong there's a big uh, a protected forest a national park in the middle where there's nothing but forest mm, there are lots of villages which are quite distant from each other now Naka I think is the the last village in the north I think if you go beyond Naka you're you're already out of Mongsong area and it's also the most famous village and I'm gonna tell you why in a minute yeah we can compare but again if you want to compare color it's good to have the same shape now I would say yeah this one is um, this one is darker so why is it darker you could have two reasons really one would be the way it was uh, the oxidation level as I said like you can process more on the green side like we like to do in Jingmai or more on the red side which would mean like longer withering time maybe um, uh, slower uh, shaching with um, lower temperature shaching um, you could also add a, a kind of oxidation step right after the shaching well if you pile the tea overnight it will also turn a bit redder so they are, these are different parameters um, on which during processing you can, you can twist the, the redness of the tea. Another thing to consider is how, strong, uh, how strongly rolled the, the tea was. Like if you give a strong rolling, in the first infusions, if you use the same time parameters for the two teas, the strong rolled one will be much stronger okay because the you could say that uh, the purpose of the rolling process is to um, kind of pre-brew the tea to extract some of the juice squeeze the juice out of the tea so that when you add water uh, there's already a lot of stuff on the surface of the leaf or at least more easily accessible okay and so the more rolled the tea is the faster it brews out okay so if you want a very endurant tea you might prefer a light roll light rolling which means that the tea will take a long time to start a couple of brews before the, the taste goes out but then it will have a longer plateau and a longer uh, fall while if you have a tightly rolled poor you'll get really 
like a quick peak, uh, maybe a higher plateau and then higher but shorter and then it will fall. Less long brewing but a more intense experience. So we could say maybe this tea was more oxidized or maybe it was just more, more tightly rolled and this one is just brewed stronger than that one because I used the same time. Okay, we're gonna try this. We're gonna try check how strong the teas are. Hmm? Hmm. Yeah, this one is brewed stronger. So it seems the neighbor is hammering something in his wall. <laughs> so two very different experiences. As you can see, I, I used quite a long brewing time at the at the start. I generally like to brew the tea strong, especially when it's about really trying the tea, because then the um, the positive and negative of each tea comes out more obviously. So. Both teas have uh, bitterness. This one has a moderate bitterness, which is um, a more typical Monghai style bitterness. A little bit like Boulangshan, but not as strong as Boulangshan. Medium bitterness, I mean, more common common kind of bitterness. The bitterness that's really in the, the back of the tongue, you know. And... Uh, It has a medium mouthfeel, it has some decent thickness, it has um, a nice, nice aroma, like a nice display, but again, quite restrained. While the Naka tea is quite different. The Naka tea has a fairly has a lighter mouthfeel, okay? Uh, it doesn't s seem as heavy in the, um, in the mouth, but it has both bitterness and high fragrance, and that's why I think Naka is uh, so sought after, actually. I would say in Mongsong you have villages which display high fragrance, and villages which display a special kind of bitterness, which is also a kind of high-pitched bitterness, it's more mm, in the upper mouth than on the side of the tongue. It's very, it's a very specific kind of bitterness that, as far as I know, you only get in, in Mong Song tea, really. And Naka has both of them. I think uh, Naka is the best village in Mong Song that I know of, at least, because it really features both bitterness high pitch bitterness and high pitch fragrance. So yeah, I would say in that way Naka has a very special personality. Nano would be more like a classic Monghai. It is sweet. It's not mild in the way that if you push it like I did, you get a decent amount of bitterness. Um, medium astringency and um, well the, the aroma it really depends on how you process it so Tafa who is uh, our friend who, who makes the tea for us in uh, in Nano um, yeah he likes to give a, a processing that would be a bit similar I would say as ours uh, he uses a bit more steaming than uh, the average in in Yunnan. 
I think we like to use a lot of steaming by comparison to other farmers which gives that uh, that smothered fragrance like the fragrance is a bit muffled but in a way it's more complex like this it's just it's kind of a shy fragrance it is there you will feel it but it's not really exploding bursting in your mouth it's really something that goes more from the throat towards the mouth you know than the usual fragrance which would just go straight up your nose and come down in your mouth but I, I think I personally like this kind of restrained fragrance it gives a very a very elegant profile to the tea you know it's not too uh, bam in your eyes tea it's not like green tea I like to make fun of green tea because uh, yeah it's become a joke I guess by now but uh, I would say beginners love green tea because the fragrance is very obvious but a lot of green teas tend to lack of depth compared to poor tea so to me I would say the real green tea is actually poor tea you can see now that the, the color is the same which is a bit strange because the color was different just before also you see you can see little um, little particles in the tea soup um, it's okay like it, it really depends on the tea sometimes you can have a, a lot of dark spots and it means that uh, the wok wasn't clean wasn't very well uh, cleaned um, usually every two batches okay two or three batches it's good to to swipe your uh, to, to clean your wok you know we use like sandpaper and then just use a, a wet cloth or use water to really um, brush off all the little leaves that sticked to the wok and burned because then once they burn they will turn into a kind of uh, dark dust and it ends up in the tea soup not that it's it's a big big problem but uh, I would say it's it's usually unpleasant for many tea drinkers and maybe you could say it's a sign that the, the tea producer lacks a bit of uh, conscientiousness which doesn't give a good vibe I guess when you're having tea you, you want to have a good experience it's not a very important thing for taste but uh, maybe the look actually also matters to help you decide whether you like a tea or not so it's better to clean your walk so here we get more bitterness okay now it's more obvious that high-pitched bitterness and I really like it very much that uh... yeah two very different teas this one is much more of a classic I would say classic Moon Hai um, with that pretty good balance between um, aggressiveness uh, like medium bitterness medium astringency mm, sweetness fragrance you get a bit of everything so I think it, it can be a good a good introduction actually that nano tea to poor tea because you get all the main features that you'll find in uh, in poor tea and the naka I would say the naka has a more uh, has more personality in the way that it's a more um, I don't know it's it's not as common a profile you could say as the nano. So yeah, I really love that kind of Naka tea. Too bad it's sold out. Now we, we have... Uh, I've only kept one cake for me. I want to see how that ages. Uh, Naka has quite a good reputation, I think, when it comes to aging. So because this tea has such a distinct profile, I'm going to stop drinking it because I would like to compare the Nano with uh, other teas from well namely with Bulang Shan area okay we can just have a look at the two two teas 
what can I say about these? Yeah, this one might be processed a little bit redder, but... Yeah, yeah, maybe this one wa was a bit higher temperature, a bit drier shatching, like, like a bit less steaming. Um, yeah, nothing particular, I think the processing was decent. Uh, both of them were hand processed. And yeah, the, the leaves are very aromatic. This and it's really due, I would say, to the varietal. Hmm? Okay, I'm gonna put it aside because now I want to compare uh, this Nano to some Bulang San. Okay, I'm gonna stop drinking that Naka tea. Hmm. Yeah, you get a lighter mouthfeel in the in the Mong Song. It's very in the Naka, it's very interesting. And if you look at the Bei Di Xiang, oh this one is so high pitched. And this one this one is, is also flowery but it would be mm, I don't know more like orchids and a bit fruity too. While this one is really alpine, it really reminds you of the high mountain. Oh I love that that Naka. Hmm. But I'm not looking down on Nano, I also really like Nano, but you know, it's a matter of uh, personal preference, it's really my heart speaking when I, I brew this uh, Naka tea. So I really hope that next year I'll be able to get more of that Naka. And I'm curious about the, the autumn, I'm really look, looking forward to um, trying the autumn version, because honestly, I think uh, I haven't... I've rarely tried, or maybe never, yeah, I've tried a few times, I think, uh, an autumn naka. But I'd like to do that more seriously and, and really try to get a great example of uh, naka gusu. So, by the way, this is the gusu in naka. They have very few gusu in naka. Um, well, they have very few shantai too, actually. the I think they have about... 50 hectares of each, okay, 600 mu, so that's 50 hectares. To give you an idea, I think in in, uh, in Jingmai we have like 600, 700 hectares just of gusu. And I think, uh, yeah, maybe 2,000, 1,500 hectares overall or something like that. So Naka is a very, very tiny um, tea producing area. And the first time I went to Naka, it was very cheap. The tea was very cheap. And I think it started getting fame from maybe 2013, 14. And now, yeah, you can say it's really expensive. Well, it's at the, at the level of Lao Mana. Lao Mana, let's talk about it. Uh, so I, I just took two cakes, okay? I took Lao Mana and, uh, and that Bulang San Mong Noi cake. So... This one is a more basic, uh, well, you could say, yeah, uh, it's a basic older Shantai, okay, older natural tea gardens. It's it's really good as a daily drinker, I think. And this one would be a slightly superior version, since it's from a famous village. Uh, the trees are younger in this one, but it's from a more famous village. So that's why I picked the two. I'm going to put those guy ones aside. So I'd like you to have a look and compare those two, those two teas. So this is the Lao Man A, right? Let me get more comfortable here. And this is the Bulang San. So what can we see? We can also see a difference, and I think it's a difference in varietal. You can see that the tea from Lao Man A also has very uh, fury buds. Actually, you could almost compare it to Naka, and it's crazy because it's supposed to, to look totally different. Um, yeah, it's quite surprising. Usually Naka has smaller leaves, you see. Um, I don't know, from the cake it looks they are fairly big. I think it's just the way the cake was pressed, because when you look at the... If you look here, like, like the leaves are quite quite small. And if you if it's in Mao Cha in loose leaf form, it's more obvious. 
uh, usually the um, the Laumana Shangtai has bigger leaves, okay? So this one, um, and, and the Gushu also tends to have larger leaves than the, than the Shangtai. You cannot see the, the fury buds on the Laoman uh, It has a whiter look than the Bulang San. It could be due to, it's probably due, I think, to a, a difference in varietal. I haven't dug very far into this over there in Bulang San. And there's for sure a difference in altitude. There's 200 meters of difference. Okay, the uh, Bulang San is generally fairly low altitude. Laomana, Laomana is at, uh, the tea gardens are at around 1,300. I think the village is 1,250 and the mountains go up to 1,400, maybe 500 in some places. This is uh, pretty low as far as uh, tea mountains in Sichuan Banago. And Weidong, uh, Weidong, which is also called Mongnoi, so Mongnoi, that's just the Dai name, the Dai people use there is Weidong. Uh, if you go to Bulangshan, don't say Weidong, you say Mongnoi, because local people uh, usually know this, this village by the name of uh, Mongnoi. Weidong is what's written on the Chinese map, and Mongnoi is the name in Dai. Uh, this one is at 1,000 meters of altitude. The gardens are a bit higher, they are on a slope, maybe 1,100 to 1,300 meters of altitude. But So, this one is produced at, at slightly higher altitude, but you could say both are at low altitude, huh? compared to like Naka or Nano. Uh, yeah, let me get back the, the nano cake so that we can really have even more things to compare. It's interesting because, honestly, if you look at these, um, well, you, you would say like the Laomana has smaller leaves actually. So that's that's very surprising. Uh, yeah, the, the Mautra didn't really look the same, but... Uh, mm, and generally, yeah, the, the Nano is darker and the Bulang Shan is even darker. And yeah, the, the looks, the, the leaves look bigger. Also, so the size of the leaf, it also depends on the grade. Huh? Of course, if you, have a, if you have a high grade of leaves, the, the leaves will look smaller just because you have more buds and buds are smaller than old leaves. Now, the, I would say, yeah, the different look is explained by the fact that this is, uh, in the Naka, this is a second flush compared to the others which are all first flush, so made in, uh, yeah, ma made in um, late March to uh, mid-April, you could say. That Naka was made in late April. I would just like to compare, uh, well, I'm gonna start by brewing the Laomana Shangtai. Ah, so talking about Bulang Shan, that's also quite a big story. Yeah, there's a lot to say about Bulang Shan. Laomana is the big, biggest. Uh, Laomana is the biggest village in Bulang Shan. Let me. Let me brew that. I'm sorry for the outside noise. It seems like. Yeah, they, they are crazy with construction We're in China and it's construction everywhere. But uh, I think that the place we'll be moving to in a couple of months will be much quieter. At least I, I hope so. Yeah, that's about it. So, I'm brewing the lawman. Uh, So Laomana is the biggest village in Bulangshan. Uh, you could say it's more in the northern part of Bulangshan huh, compared to... Um, well, Bulangshan, just like Mongsong, is a huge area. So it depends on how you see it, really. 
if you go south of Monghai, then you have a, a, a huge plain which is all planted with paddy rice, uh, which you could call Monghun, Monghun area. So Monghun is a, 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 a town that's uh, south of Monghai, and it's the starting point to go to like Hukai and Lao Banzang, and then uh, Lao Man, uh, and then Bulangshan. So that's a way you can go to Bulangshan. Or from Monghun, you can go towards the Burmese border, uh, go quite a long way, on the way to Daluo, that's called. And at some point, you turn left, and you enter in the mountain. Um, and that's also the beginning of Bulangshan, at least like politically, you know, you, that's how, like it's the official name of the place. Okay, it's Bulangshan, Bulangshan. But I would say real Bulangshan only starts once you cross a big uh, national park like this, a kind of, uh, I would say almost primary forest. It's a really beautiful area that you cross and once you cross it, so that's all heading south. Once you cross it, then I would say you're in proper Bulangshan. So you could say Bulangshan, I would say, where there's really a lot of tea. It's a strip that's all along the Burmese border. Yeah, the, the strip all along the Burmese border, I would say, is real Bulangshan. And then you have roads that go up. So Laomana would be at the northern part of that area. And if you go more in the north, you arrive in uh, Xin Banzang and then Lao Banzang. So that would be like Banzang area. I would say you have three villages in Banzang. You have Xin Banzang, Lao Banzang and Bakanoi which is a lesser known village, but still very expensive and very good tea. And then if you go more north than this, uh, you, you will reach Banpen. And then Banpen, which is the first village of Hokai area. Banpen, Mannong, Manmai, these are the three main villages of Hokai area. And then you're back in Monghun. Okay, so it all starts from Monghun. Monghun, so you can see that easily on Google map, okay? Look at Monghai. Look at the south. You have a huge plain. It's very obvious in Google Maps. And then south of this, you have, in order, Hokai, Banzang, and Bulangshan areas. And then you're in you're in Burma if you keep going south. So let let me just take back my uh, my Nanuo tea. My Laomana tea, and I'm gonna drink tea now, okay? Uh, I'm gonna just brew the Laomana first. Actually, you know what? I, I want to just have a new brew of that uh, Nano San. It's interesting that the, the stems turn a bit red. Due to oxidation after uh, after a while in the Gaiwan, wet like this, a few of the stems turned red. This is unusual, first time I, no I noticed this in that Nanuo blue. Yeah, this protein, so even in the same cake, you'll get slightly different results every time you try brewing tea, you know, because um, that's part of the randomness of which uh, leaves are pressed together and stuff. So that's also why I like that poor tea, you know, every, even in a, the same cake, every mm, brew will be slightly different. But of course you should have the overall character, right? Okay, I'm just, I'm, I'm gonna need to recharge the camera, so I think what I'm gonna do is that uh, I'm gonna make a part two to the video, okay, where I'll be brewing that Laman uh, and the Bulang and that Laman, uh, the Nano, and then we'll get to the Bulang Shan too. And I will start from scratch, okay, with the Nano. I think that'll be better, okay? So see you in the next part of the video. Bye bye.